Mars is a frozen wasteland with an average temperature of minus 60 degrees. That's because its atmosphere doesn't have enough carbon dioxide to keep it warm. On the other hand, the temperature on the surface of Venus is hot enough to melt lead. Not simply because it's closer to the sun, but because Venus has an atmosphere with 400 times more carbon dioxide than Earth. The early Earth was much more volcanic than it is today because its core was so much hotter. And this provided enough carbon dioxide to compensate for the weak sun. It was volcanoes that prevented the young Earth from freezing over. And so early life was able to survive. But even this was not the end of what volcanoes have done for life on Earth. About 600 million years ago, they also helped trigger the greatest evolutionary leap in Earth's history. And a great evolutionary leap was certainly needed, because soon after life got started, it got stuck in a bit of a rut. Shark Bay in Western Australia is home to some of the oldest life forms on Earth. These strange domes are made up from layer upon layer of bacteria. They're called stromatolites. For most of Earth's long history, this was the most advanced life on Earth. For two billion years, stromatolites ruled our planet unchallenged. And there was nothing to suggest that this was ever going to change. But life was to face a crisis, a crisis that would finally end the long reign of the stromatolites and lead to the beginning of a new era in the story of life on Earth. The era of complex life. It's only in the last few years that scientists have realised just what a catastrophe the planet endured around 700 million years ago and how it's linked to the evolution of life. Here in Namibia, southwest Africa, Paul Hoffman discovered evidence for this disaster in rocks that used to be on the sea floor. Here we have a bunch of very, very thin layers of fine sediment typical deposits of quiet water, maybe very slowly moving bottom currents, nothing unusual. But then you have these outsized stones. There's one here, 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 here. And then look at this big fella here. So these are perfectly normal sediments, but this is unusual. There's no way this could have been transported in quiet water. There had to be another process that brought the stone and plopped it down into the sediment. These boulders are known as drop stones, and how they made their way to an ocean near the equator is really quite remarkable. The boulders were brought here by ice. They were picked up on land at the base of a glacier. The glacier flowed off the land and out onto the sea, and those stones that were in the iceberg, drop out of the iceberg as it melts, plop down into the sediment. And that's why we call these stones drop stones. Ice sheets at the equator could mean only one thing. Now the fact that there are drop stones here means that there were glaciers flowing into the ocean in one of the warmest parts of the world. That means there must have been ice everywhere and we call that a snowball earth. 